Good day, ghoulish lords and ghostly ladies, and welcome to a very special Halloween edition of Rampage Nights, a Cornish Let's Play with me, Cornish Knight, and my eternal co-conspirator, Defuax, who unfortunately is not using a microphone today because his microphone is broken or otherwise inconvenienced. So let us dive right in, shall we? Rampage Nights, from what we can tell, which is, an, which is a um, by the way, a lovely little uh, sort of Street Fighter, not Street Fighter, but Streets of Rage esque 2D sort of like um, fighting game. So, if you imagine some of the old games, sort of like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that they used to play in the arcades, it's a bit like that. It's like a side scrolling beat em up where you unlock different classes and you have different attack combinations. It seems to be predominantly suited for a more controller-based um, game style, I and mean, you can play it with a keyboard. Both, both myself and the Fuax are playing with keyboards, though I would probably recommend that you play it with a uh, controller because it seems a bit more easier on the hand. But here we go. Now, for all of you who don't know, um, Monday. Uh, the f well, basically tomorrow. Well, I'm in Britain at the moment, so it will be Monday for me. Monday is Halloween, or to use its proper name, All Hallows Eve. Now, it's basically a mix, especially in Britain, it's a mixture of holidays. It's a mixture of All Hallows Evening, which is basically All Saints Day, or it's basically like a very important Saints Day, where it was believed that you could pray for the souls of the departed who had yet to reach heaven and also to pay your respects to heaven. Um, but it also lies over the top of another earlier holiday, um, a pagan holiday, a Gallic festival named Samhain, 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 um, which is not really that surprising. The early Christian church had a habit of placing holidays over the top of um, pagan holidays. For example, Christmas is actually not in the right place. I believe that Christmas was supposed to be closer to Easter in the Christian calendar, but they relocated it because basically it was they wanted to um, stamp out an earlier tradition. You can pick up you can pick up various items in this game which I like. You can pick up weapons, you can pick up I uh, potions, um, spells, all kinds of things. It's a really good game. The, enem the enemies are very varied and very fast paced. There's lots of classes to unlock and play. You unlock classes in this game by doing challenges like stamping so many opponents or beating a particular boss. So far I've unlocked a couple of classes. The Fuax, who was very dedicated to unlocking everything before he plays, um, who before, so before he does Let's Play videos, manages to manage to unlock everything in about six hours of straight play. He is a real trooper. Yes, as you can see, you can hit your your friends. Um, we tested it, and unfortunately, oh, as I say, unfortunately, it's not unfortunate. Luckily, though you can knock your friends about, you cannot kill them. Yeah, I should warn that some of the potions in this game do really weird stuff. I'm not kidding. I'm serious. I'm really, really serious. Um, in one of my other get tippy I got him, I basically that's me getting sort of poisoned, I died as you can see in this game, in co-op in single player you have like so many lives, in co-op you have one life each but you can get more lives but the benefit is you can become a ghost as you see I'm a ghostly Cornish Knight now and the, the whole point of the ghost is that you need to get ten souls of any unfortunate individual you come across and once you have ten souls you resurrect and I really like that mechanic because it means that at least as long as you have one person supporting you you can sort of keep going plus the benefit of the ghost is though they only do like one point of damage which is tiny they can actually um, juggle a lot of opponents juggling by the way for those of you who don't play a lot of fighting games is the ability to basically keep the enemy either stuck in the air which is the term juggling or to Basically, you keep them pinned for greater or lesser extent, normally in the air, but you can keep them locked against a wall or other piece of scenery. Now we are into the dungeon, which is really cool. The ba basically, the background story for this is that 
you and your associate are coming home from adventuring and um, it, you just literally get caught by a sorcerer, he puts a spell on you, he steals your treasure and you are compelled to advance into um, into this castle that you see in the distance. Now as you can see, you can kick people, you can pick them up, you can throw them. It's I do like it a lot. I do love this game. On single on, playing on its own is absolutely nightmarish. Poor throw for me. Um, one thing I should warn you about is that they, those like little cliff edges you see in there. Yep, as you can see, it's really easy to fall off. Now I'm just going to say this right now. This was my only second time playing this game, so you'll have to forgive me for the amount of times I die in it. The next time I played Thorax, I played much, much better. But as you can see, the ghost is really powerful because he can't actually take damage. So when you're playing on areas with environmental hazards, he becomes really, really powerful. You can see um, the Thorax's character's ability, which is assassinate. Um, interestingly enough, all the different classes have different perks. For example, um, I've unlocked the Adventurer, the Barbarian, and I think another one, I can't remember which one it is now. The Thorax has unlocked all of them, but the Barbarian class, for example, he moves at 25% less speed, but you get um, more health, a massive great sword as a starting weapon, but you can't have any armour. The Barbarian refuses to wear, um, refuses to wear armour. Now the downside of being a ghost, as you can see, is I can't pick up anything, weapons or anything at all. So I suffer from the problem that um, being a ghost, I, I continue to remain being weak. So as the game goes on, it will be harder and harder for me to actually um, survive. There are bosses in this game. There are also checkpoints. You saw one earlier when I went through and re re resurrected. When you clear an area, you will be allowed to come back to life. Now what I'm doing here, as you can see, is I am constantly basically blocking this particular sort of mini boss or sort of like elite enemy in a combat anima animation using my character so that he is easily defeated by the Fuax. Because I only do like one damage, I can't do very much. So what I try and do is help the Fuax as much as possible so I can be revived back to life. Now you get these side rooms that open up which are really cool which normally have like challenges or other things in it. Now I do love this game, it is really good. It's murder on the hands though. Using um the con using the keyboard for it is absolutely murder on the hands. I was trying to do a slash attack. You trying to do the combination attacks with the controller is a a bit tricky and if you haven't realized already I should probably it's probably already warn you. This game is rather gory, so you have been warned. Um I know, a bit late for that, but hey ho, better late than never, eh? Um you do get money in this game that you can spend to buy items. I just really like it. It has this comical sort of like fantasy medieval thing that I like. I like being able to dress up as a knight. Um, you can actually play a knight class in the game, which is really cool. You can play stuff like wizards and yeah, I know I was being stupid. I walked off the edge. Don't blame me. I haven't played one of these games in a really long time. The last one I played was Streets of Vengeance. Or was it Streets of Rage? I can never remember now. It was a long time ago. It might have been one of its clones, in fact. A lot of games popped up around that time that was sort of based on like the Streets of Rage, sort of like 2D pla like street fighting game. But I do like this game. It's just pleasant. You can customise your character, you can give them different hats, different faces. Make them look cool. I mean, I've locked loads of gear. I've unlocked like, stuff like a stag helmet and all that kind of stuff. and. You can be a pirate who fires cannonballs, and you can get little aids that help you run around. I must admit, from my experience of playing this game, the aids in it, the aids are massively powerful. I mean, I got one which was basically um, what were those things from Dungeons and Dragons, like the giant floating eyes, like horrors, whatever they were called. Um, but I got one of them that basically had a massive powered-up beam attack every so often. It just literally wrecked face. And I was being like a ghost, I was a ghost floating around with this eyeball that basically just killed everything. Now this is interesting. Um, this is this is basically one of like the mini-games you get in the game. He's basically the devil, if you can't tell. And what you do is you go up to him and you basically play a game of cards where you have, I think, five or six cards. One of them is the devil's card and the other one like items and perks. 
for I will warn you the the perks aren't always fantastic um so there are seven of them basically that's companion there that little angel um and that's the devil card when you get the devil card basically demons will spawn which is not particularly fantastic um I got a perk from him once, which was basically I did massive amounts of damage, but I constantly lost every second I lost a point of health unless I was hitting someone. So I constantly had to charge into combat and um, fight people, which as you can imagine is rather annoying. Now these guys have got shields. I was trying to do a power attack to break them. That's the that's the forward moving power attack. This was only my second time playing this game, you understand, so I apologise if I was being rather rubbish at it. I mean, I've still only got a club for Peter's sake, and he's running around with a battle axe, which I was deeply frustrated over. Um, but we're, I, I, I'm a lot better at the game now than I was when I was recorded this. Um, the Fu axe is really good, but he like played it for six and a half straight hours. And yes, you, as you can see, we are being attacked by living buckets and living crates so this is basically sort of like the nightmare version of Harry Potter um, you can jump, you can do all kinds of things it's just a really nice game, it's on stale I think it's still on sale at the moment um, it's just it's just fun, everything is randomised everything is different a really good tactic I've found in this is to try and get all the enemies like in one direction and then literally just sort of wail on them like the, uh, the Fuax is doing otherwise they sort of swarm you you really don't want enemies to get behind you. It's, you can roll in this game, and you can you can't block, unfortunately. So, oh yeah, that's not good. Um, I was still trying to get the ropes of the game at the time. I'd only played it a little bit on my own, and then I jumped into a co-op game with the Fuax. But uh, it's nice. It's fun. Lots of different enemy types. The Fuax has been playing it for I said for like six and a half hours by the um, by well last time I talked to him. When he had unlocked nearly everything. Well, I think he's unlocked all the character classes by that point. As you can see, the the hack, um, I say the hacking, I say the lock picking mechanic is rather straightforward. Which is that you have to knock things down. If you knock them, knock some of the wrong ones down, you get damage. So it just sort of breaks your lock picking. You have to start again. If you do it too often, you can have a risk of the lock actually jamming up. Drank a weird potion and it had weird effects. I like it. I really, really like it. Now I am considering having this on my channel. If you guys actually would would like that, just leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, I might not do it too often, partly because the file size is absolutely massive. I mean, half an hour of this was basically about four and a half gigabytes raw footage, which is rather large. Um, because for those of you who don't know, my internet is rather terrible. I tend to have to make slightly smaller videos so that I actually can upload them within a distant, decent time frame. Um, so you may only get like a 20 minute video of this in seg several segments just because it's easier for me to upload it. It's the same thing I do with Barony in all honesty. I mean, I love Barony, but to, to record entire gameplays worth of Barony, Barony, like a full run through, is actually quite large. The raw data packages is, are, I believe, you're looking at like 6, 7 gigabytes for maybe 8 gigabytes for a full run through. Um, so I do have to break them up. Otherwise, you'd never get to see the things. Which is a shame, but my internet where I live is not particularly fantastic, and I'm on broadband, so it's just how it is. You can see a fireball kicking off. I'm there, stamping someone, beating up a living chair. You can pick enemies up and throw them. You can spin them about. You can do all kinds of things. It's a really good little game, and um, it's relatively cheap at the moment. I think it's about four pounds, around the four pound mark. Um, you can get drunk. You it's all it's just very a very funny game. You can get drunk. Your screen can go hazy. You can stagger about. You can shrink. You can get something called the duck disease, which is basically every item in the game appears as a rubber duck on the ground, so you don't know what it does. And when you pick it up, it just basically goes quack. Um, that was funny. You can get traps like this, which are like poison traps. You can get weapons that do poison damage. It's just a 
for the price of the game, it's just really fun. And if you can get it with co play, if you can get someone to play it with you, it's really fun. This is one of the what you saw just popping up there, by the way, is um, an unlock, which is basically they're like little challenges in the game that you use to um, unlock new classes. You need to unlock about three of them. For example, I believe to unlock the Barbarian, you had to ground stomp ten enemies, uh, kill so many enemies, I think it was like 30 enemies or something, or I can't remember what it was. See, like I just got a disease from drinking that, I got ass disease, um, or ass poisoning. Um, you got to do th various things, I think one of them was killing a giant, one of them was stomping ten en enemies, and one of them was killing a set amount of enemies. There are bosses in the game. I mean, the ones you're seeing at the moment, they're not really bosses, they're more like elite enemies, which, considering how tough they are, is rather frightening. Um, this game on single player is brutally hard, as you can imagine. The enemies come in really deep waves. But what you can do, I find, is that you can like kick enemies into a corner like this and murder a whole bunch of them at once, which is really cool. Enemies throw stuff, it's just absolutely brutal. We've got demons, we've got living pots, we've got references to particular well-known film icons. I hate these big enemies. When they have those stars over their heads, it means they've got a rampage. The Fuax throwing off some fireballs. And that's beating a local witch. Unfortunately, at this point, I think the Fuax gets killed, which is a rather shame. That voice, you basically, I believe, if you can go through a level without dying, you get health back, or if you can find some items, give you lives back. So he did a power attack, which is really cool. I understand juggling enemies for him. Because it's a useful thing to do for your teammate is to, like, to juggle them in this game. And we have a shop, and now I really wish that we had. I was alive. Um, as you can see, the enemies in this game can come from anywhere. You can look, you can have like living. Um, like. Uh, candles, can candlesticks? Yeah, living candlesticks. Uh, there's a particular name for them, but I can't remember what they're called. Basically, they're basically known as like. That's not candle stands, that's basically a hat stand. But it's really interesting. You actually get those, they're really cool. Like elongated candlesticks. Candelabra? Is it a candelabra? No, I can't remember. Interestingly, a candelabra, um, they used to actually, as the name implies, have candles on them. So you had to have some poor person used to get up and like light the silly things every single day or we used to put quite long candles in them and then like you had to go up and light them and then when everybody was finished you just had to put them out. But these things like hanging from the ceiling. She has a spinning attack there. Oh, I hadn't quite got the combat mechanisms down so I was like get, just sort of getting used to it. But as you can see the Fuax has taken a potion of, I think it's like giant strength or something. You can kick enemies if they're really close. Stupid flying painting. I tried to dodge out of the way and got hit. But yeah, I like this game a lot. For the price that for what you get for the price that you pay, this is a special item. Yeah, I got took some really stupid damage. I was really annoyed about that. So if you get close enough to an enemy, you can do what the Fuax did and kick them into objects, which is really cool. Um that ability I've picked up is basically like a lightning spell. I hadn't quite really figured out how lightning spells worked at the time of playing this, so I didn't quite realise that my mana bar went back up, um, which is a bit unfortunate. Nearly fell off there. And I'm just desperately trying to like. What I do like is that you don't actually have to smash stuff to get for objects. If like barrels and stuff, you just walk through them, which is really cool. Um, now the only downside of hitting a friend in this game that we can tell is besides knocking them over is the fact you can do it to knock them over into enemies which is really bad. Now unfortunately you would think oh all the enemies are dead 
which is um, fantastic, except we've got a whole room full of barrels, which means that the enemies can literally come out of the woodwork by becoming living barrels, living objects. Um, it's not fantastic, folks. As you can see, the Fuax is there desperately trying to keep the enemies at bay. I should have probably hit an explosive barrel. The Fuax then accidentally... F I think it falls off, we fall from a trap, which is not fantastic. The Fuax being his helpful self and knocking them into the pit. All the dead people will basically go and help him. Now these bolt if you hit them before they wake up, they actually do explode, which is really cool. Stupid knife throwing barrel men. Yeah, okay, it's one of these games, right? It's gonna be standing stupid like, oh I got killed by a living lampshade, or I got killed by a barrel, or I got killed by a bucket. It's one of those games where, hmm, I ended up being killed, turning back into a ghost, a ghostly helmet, and then I proceeded to go around beating people to death with my ghostly fists. It's one of those games that doesn't take itself very seriously. It's just a good time, it's fun, it's two player. I would, to be honest, it's as you can see, it's manic with two people. I'd be actually quite scared to see what it would do with um, with only with, with even more people. You can't play it with any more, which I was very ashamed to hear about, because I was trying to get an associate of mine, Runkle Panda, and um, myself and Defuax to play this, because I thought it would be absolutely crazy having like a three-person team going about. But unfortunately, they limited it to two people co-op, which I can understand. Any more, and I think it would have become a bit too easy, because like it's not an easy game anyway. But with two people, especially if one of them's a ghost, it becomes significantly easier, because you just you just wreck face. You really do wreck face. Now, when you go, you, there are some loading screens, but only when you sort of go from in between zones. So it can no, it, it run it ran really smoothly. We didn't have any lag. You get you get little funny rooms like this. I mean, I just love it. It's all randomly generated. It's all fun. You can just beat up on chairs. So you can pick chairs up, you can pick enemies up, you carry them around, you can throw them into things. Um, I landed on like the perk ups, we got like benefits to our strength and our movement and our stamina. And you can get monsters coming up and that. It's like potions. It's just a fun game. It's just. I just really like it. They really, really do. Now these are particularly nasty, these little things. These are basically summoning towers, which is, um, well, for, for better or worse, what you do is you have to kill them to proceed, but as you're hitting them, they basically shriek and summon up, summon additional enemies to help you. Normally, what the good advantage for what a good tactic for this is, is to have one person fighting all the enemies and one person like beating up the summoning towers because obviously if you're not careful you can um... I hate those giant mushroom creatures this is revenge for all your mushroom brethren that I ate isn't it? isn't it? well your brother tasted delicious with bacon and a fried egg um... You actually don't want to eat this particular kind of mushroom. It's actually a toadstool. It's oh, what was it? I'm trying to remember what term the toadstool is called, but it's a really toxic one, as indicated by the red and white spots. Now, as you can see, I'm rather getting my backside kicked, so it would probably be a good idea if I actually manage to fight a bit better. Um, the enemies are relatively tough in this game, so you don't really want to underestimate them. A knight fighting another knight, and that knight is winning. Ah, that's what that mushroom is called. Fly Agarak. Fly Agarik. Yeah, it's pretty poisonous. Really poisonous. 
though deaths from them are extremely rare. Hmm. Though you can boil it. Though I, this is basically one thing I'm going to say. Do not do this. I'm just reading off some information about this particular mushroom. Is that you can boil it and it reduces its toxicity. So you can eat it, and they do eat it in some parts of Europe. Though I would strongly recommend that you do not do this. That you do not do this. Never get mushrooms from your local supermarket or someone who actually knows about mushrooms. Do not, under any circumstances, do this without professional supervision. Or would not be held accountable. Another good thing about the ghost, as you can see, is you can blow up barrels. And explosive barrels without having to worry about you get yourself taking loads of damage. Which is nice. I mean, you get so many enemy classes in this, it's just unbelievable. You get, look, I'm getting beaten up upon by a bunch of really angry living pots and goblins. I mean, how brilliant is that? It's like, right, come at me, living pots. Skeletons and... Orcs and... I think that's a living table. I'm getting beaten up on by a living table now and it's a witch and there's a half-dead skeleton crawling about and... Oh, it's just a brilliant, brilliant little game. I'm really, I really enjoy it and prob we are going to do some more of it, me and the Fuax, with live commentary. So, we're just going to be experimenting with um, Skype for it to see how it works with Skype. Um, if that doesn't work, you might try some other kind of online um, TeamSpeak option like Discord or TeamSpeak. I've used TeamSpeak in the past. It's relatively good, so I might look at that. And you can get it for free, and as long as you're using it small scale, it's free. Oh, I do love this. This is such a great game. It's just nice to play like a, a brawling game, like a street brawling game with a friend. And the Iron Maiden. This is one of the bosses that you get in the game. Well, I think I don't actually think this is one of the end boss, like aim end level bosses. I think this is like one of the sub bosses, which is just absolutely terrifying. Um, it was my first time meeting one of these things, so it was pretty, pretty unnerving because they are massive. Um, yeah, just, it's just, I just unbelievable. And now I've shrunken down to a tiny size. Um, when you kill the the bomb carriers, by the way, they spill bombs all over the place. Um, oh, yeah, I just love this game. It's just so quirky. There's so many things. I mean, this was the second time I was playing it for, for a serious length of time, so I wasn't quite sure of what to do. But yeah, it's just such a nice game. I'm. You can shrink yourself, turn yourself, like make yourself see ducks. Just it's just silly and fun and grim and gruesome and Halloweeny and I just thought it would be a lovely game to sell off to all my to all my watchers and all my to my, my followers. If you want to have a nice game, please check it out. It's Rampage Night. You can find it on Steam. It's on discounted. It's made by a great little um, indie studio from I believe is it. Um, let me just double check. I'm pretty sure it's from. Uh, Ukraine? Um, let me just check. As always, if you've liked, please like my video. If you want to follow, follow on Facebook or on Twitter at the links provided below. Unfortunately, my colleague has died. I can't remember exactly where they're from. But look them up. They're a great game company. Really good guys.